Hi there, and welcome to Art, Life, and Faith. My name is Joey O'Connor, and it's my pleasure today to introduce you to Shane Tucker. I met Shane a number of years ago through the Grove Center for the Arts and Media. At the time, he and his wife, Christy, were ministering in Ireland. They have three children, and they've had some wonderful adventures, some travels, uh, ministering in, in my homeland. My uh, grandfather came from Ireland in 1898. So Shane is a man after my own heart in many ways. And Shane is currently working and ministering in Nashville, Tennessee. And one thing that I, that I just love about uh, interviewing artists and being able to talk with different men and women across the country on these Skype interviews and conversations is, is just to share the heart and passion that people like Shane bring to the arts, the church, ministry. And just to have productive conversations about what does it mean to live an integrated life of art and faith and walking with God. And, and I'm sure you're going to learn a lot today as you hear from Shane. So Shane, I just want to welcome you and thank you so much for taking time out of your evening to, to be with me and just talk about things that we both care a lot about. Joey, thanks for having me, and I am honored to be here with you. And I found um, your presence online uh, very inspiring for many years, and so it's great to have uh, any opportunity to converse with you. Thank you. Great. Well, hey, tell me about what you are currently doing, because you and your wife and the community that you're part of in Nashville, Franklin area in Tennessee, Tennessee you're doing some really innovative things, and uh, I'm excited about what you are up to. So explain to me a little bit about your ministry to artists and creatives. And as we talked a little bit before, you know, people that have been kind of hurt or broken or down and out and, and you know, the, the real depth of ministry you have with, with people in the area that God's called you to. Yeah. So uh, after 11 years in Ireland, as you mentioned, we moved back to America. That is my wife and I, my children have never lived here before. Um, in June of 2010, and we landed in a little place south of Nashville called Spring Hill, Tennessee, and eventually uh, got connected with um, a small cadre of, uh, of the faithful in um, a cafe called Wind Farm Cafe, and they also uh, meet there as a faith community. And one of the things that drew me first and foremost was their tagline for this, um, this little mission. It's called Four Winds Mission, and it was an artistic, socially conscious community of faith. So that got me asking more questions, and after chatting with the, um, the pastor, who was a record producer for 24 years, realized he also had a strong heartbeat for pastoring people in um, the arts in some way, shape, or form, investing himself in creative fields. And so, um, so a relationship started. And um, the cafe, I suppose, in essence, is for me in some ways a, a bit of like a Millennium Three monastery. Uh, where uh, we can invite people into uh, that third place a lot of writers will talk about. It's not home, it's not work, it's somewhere that's other, and invite people into conversation and hopefully get to invite them into a bigger story, which all of us are yearning to be a part of, whether we know it or not. Um, and it's great because we can um, uh, touch on any, any subject matter um, about life in general, relationships, finance, future, uh, faith, and uh, even have had the opportunity on occasion to um, be able to pass on some, some food to some artists who are, are struggling right now. So um, it's been a really great privilege to work there and to be amongst the creatives that come in. So That's incredible. Um, Shane, I know that we share the passion of seeing artists grow in the relationship with God to a new depth, to a new understanding of what are the gifts, talents, uh, the personality, the unique way that God has wired us as artists and creatives? What do you see that artists are really longing for, both in their personal lives, their relationship to the church, and, and even the, the culture around them? What, what, what do you see are some common themes? And just to make sure I'm hearing you right, Joey, some, what are some issues that they're dealing with, as you say? Well, uh, uh, things, it could be issues that they're dealing with or real longings that they have uh, in integrating their walk with God into their, their life, their faith, so they're, where they're growing personally, uh, mm -hmm. where they fit in the church in terms of their creative work, mm -hmm. and how does that, in essence, uh, influence the surrounding culture, the, the culture they're seeking to create around them? 
So mm -hmm. kind of those three areas, you know, personally within the church and and the, the surrounding culture. Yeah, I know. And one thing we we detailed a little bit in previous conversation was this uh, the importance of identity. And I suppose that comes back to that personal component that you mentioned. And, uh, you know, for me, why I'm so passionate about uh, pastoring creatives, you know, is because of, of the calling that I believe generally creatives have in their life. It's a it's a prophetic calling in some ways, you know, um, uh, being able to paint a picture of the future, um, you know, for people that will be one day or that can be one day, um, no matter what medium they're trafficking in, you know, be it painting or, or writing or uh, recording music or making films, you know, so. So uh, personally for an artist, for me, it's really trying to encourage them to really, I suppose, uh, abandon, recklessly abandon themselves to God's good care of them, and, and in so doing, uh, grow in that intimacy where that identity springs from. And so um, I suppose more corporately, if I'm understanding your question right, um, how do they, where do they find themselves in a church? And I guess oftentimes I've felt, and I don't think... Uh, this is nothing new. In fact, I know it's not. I've been hearing it for years and years. But that you know, many artists have not felt maybe accepted in the church uh, as an institution. That is, mm -hmm. oftentimes. And for me, from my own experience, I feel it's probably been largely due to the fact that the arts are somewhat of an unknown quantity. They're not easily contained or or, or boxed, you might say. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, you know, the church often has a problem with mystery to some degree, by and large, and, and that's really what the arts are. I think um, uh, one individual says the role of the artist is to deepen the mystery, mm -hmm. and, um, and I think that's true. So um, I don't know if I've touched on the third one. What was the third one again? Well, the third was just uh, for artists of faith or someone who would call themselves an artist who, who is a Christian. What do you see in the conversation going on of how— how do they wrestle with their place in culture or, or making a solid contribution to the, our, our larger culture? Because we definitely have a, a smaller Christian subculture of where certain types of art forms are accepted, primarily music first, because that's what we see in the church. There's a, a Christian subculture of film. There's a Christian subculture of visual art. But those subcultures really, really don't always... Uh, make a big impact in the broader, larger uh, culture, primarily because uh, in many light, uh, in, in many ways, uh, pastors or churches are only looking for art for evangelism purposes. And it's not to say that art can't fill that purpose sometimes, but as we know, when it's all the times, it, it can easily slip into uh, pro uh, propaganda or you know, real authentic ways of uh, sharing a compelling message in, in kind of a canned, formulaic way. So so there's, I guess, to frame that question better is for the, the, the artists that you meet with, how do they see where they fit in that larger culture in our society and, and how are they making a contribution to it? Or, or okay. at least their desire to make a contribution to it. Yeah, I see what you're saying, and I think, um, you know, that we certainly have operated in that mindset of, uh, you know, what is Christian art versus what is mainstream art, and I mean, um, and that conversation, as you, you know, you and I both know, has been going on for quite some time, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, I could say, regardless of whatever arena that you're uh, intending to, to traffic within, mm -hmm. to work within, um, the process really should be the same. That any of the artists I have felt that I have known or worked with, and even myself at mm -hmm. times when, when writing or whatever, mm -hmm. whenever I get too caught up in the end game mm -hmm. or, or the product of what I'm producing, um, I lose it all. All inspiration or that you know that's God breath, you know God breathed, you know is gone. And so I think the people in terms of making an impact that are most noticed in society. Mm -hmm are those who are single-heartedly, passionately pursuing what they were made to do, you know, and, um, you know, no matter what arena, as I said earlier, that's in, um, you know, if we can enjoy the process of creating, no matter what, again, medium we, we use or we're gifted in, um, and, and do it with all our heart, that's, you know, how we're wired up and what we're made to be about, um, I think ultimately it will 
find its place in culture, you know, and will generate conversation, which I think is one of the major uh, roles of the arts is to, to uh, raise the um, uh, significance of the question, you know, and so so it comes back to me about not being overly consumed with the end product. And in this area, I'm in, in, in Middle Tennessee, in Nashville, being primarily, uh, you know, music-based, I suppose, artistry around here. You know, it has been for so long about um, the end game. Like for record labels, how much money can this artist generate for us? And I think that uh, short circuits the whole uh, vocation, if you will, uh, of the artist. Right. I've had some interesting conversations lately, and in one project that I've been working on in particular, the the issue of craft and excellence has come up again and again because, and when we when we dial this back to this issue of identity, um, if if the if the focus is on just the product, the end game, but we don't begin with our understanding of first who we are in Christ and what this co-creator relationship that we have with God is, and we're not committed to the excellence of developing the necessary disciplines to improve in the craft that God has given us, um, the, the, the end game for that product is, is, is usually going to be a shoddy product, which yeah. reflects poorly on not only the artist or on God, or on the actual product that's produced, but it, it has a whole lot to say about what we really believe. You know, if we're just pushing something to get out into the, you know, into the marketplace, but it's a yeah. shoddy product, what does that really say about who we are as artists and our understanding of ourselves and our identity? Um, do you see that playing out in any ways in, in, in some of the people that you dialogue with and or uh, different... Um, different projects that you've seen developed over the years. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And again, I think it's that motivation, that starting point oftentimes for artists, you know, like, um, why am I doing this? Why am I getting into this? You know, is it for the, the love of, of the, the art, you know, or, or the sense of I'm called to this, or is it because I, I want to make a name for myself, you know, doing something? And I think, you know, I've certainly... Uh, struggle with that my whole life, <laughs> wanting to be known for doing something well, and um, and I think um, you know, uh, going into it with that heart's motivation is is always going to end up pulling the rug out from underneath of us. You know, it has to come from a a certain sense of authenticity, like you you mentioned earlier, because of our identity. You know, um, uh, I'm thinking of this natural organic process. You know, about uh, creating that. Oftentimes, you know an excellent piece of art, no matter what, again, medium it is, will point back to the artist naturally. You know, people want to start asking questions about that individual and their life and their story. And then, you know, us as works of art, as human beings, ultimately, an in intimate relationship with our creator uh, in Christ will ultimately then point back to Jesus himself, because you know, so it's a very natural process, the art back to the artist, you know, and then the artist, you know, back to the creator, if you will, and so um, I think it's the motivation, I think that often, uh, you know, starting out to want to be known, rather than just doing something because you're made for it, you love it, you know, and right. the people, and, and the community of people that you love doing these things with, so, Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I, I um, for years and years, I've, I've written many books, and I can look at certain books that I wrote when I was in my 30s, when I had three young kids at home, and I was really kind of going from contract to contract, book to book, and I can look at some of the things that I wrote and just go, you know, that, that was a pile of crap, you know, and, and you know, and, and I can see that the motivation was wrong, and I think that's why it's really important to look at people's work over a lifetime because for where I am in my in my writing process now I, I really just see myself I, I don't want to write anything for God or for anyone else I, I really just want to participate with God in this creative process like you say and let it be organic and natural and at the same time do the very very best at my craft that I can do and to do that it means it's t it, it takes longer, it's slower, there's more drafts, there's more rewrites, but yeah. hopefully it's producing a better a better product. So yeah, I can no, certainly I, relate to what you're talking about. Absolutely. And again, it's just that authenticity, I think. And even, 
you know, to not try to put forth an image of ourselves that's shinier or, or you know, or more polished than what we currently are. And I, I think that way about as a Christian now for about 25 years about evangelism that, um, yes, I need to be intentional about um, looking for opportunities to love people. And in so doing, I'll have an opportunity to share something of Jesus with them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also think that if I'm not actively trying to hide the fact that, that I've, I'm, a, I'm a follower of Christ, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm in intimate relationship with him, it's going to show naturally. Right. So, um, so yeah, I think um, I've certainly it's just me being um, able to tell the story thus far that God's been writing with my life. And as I've experienced him, I don't have to make anything up. You know, he'll use that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Shane, last time when we were when we were closing up, you talked to a, a lot about in, uh, about intimacy with Christ and identity, and you talked about this whole idea of story and how important it is that that we see our individual lives in the context of a greater story. So, in wrapping up today, um, what would you just say to an artist who's discouraged, who who really needs to get that big picture perspective that hey, there's something bigger going on than just my struggles than than you know maybe my finances or my relationships what would you just say for that that artist who feels discouraged or misunderstood where they're fitting in in god's story at this this part in their lives how, how can we encourage them yeah well again it goes back to that identity really i ultimately believe that's significant because that's where we create out of you know and so um, for me, it'd be just to encourage the artist that you have a calling on your life, like everyone else, but your calling as an artist is unique. Um, in essence, a vocation of a prophet, if I dare say so, of, again, being able to um, foretell a future that it does not yet exist, to paint a picture of the future that can produce passion in somebody or to touch on those issues of ultimate significance or meaning for us as human beings that resonate with all of our hearts because we were all made by the same creator, whether we're um, in intimate relationship with him or estranged from him. And so the artist, I think, is really uh, significant, being able to, um, yeah, to, in essence, invite people into the story that God's writing with our lives through whatever art form they um, they work in. So, I mean, um, I would want to, the, to encourage them with that. And I guess, too, in that process to say that um, as a prophet, oftentimes, it's important to recognize uh, the ability to, to step away from the traffic of life for a period of time uh, and be in those places of silence and solitude because oftentimes artists feel that their inspiration comes from activity, especially engaging with other artists either through their art forms or in conversation, and that's good. But it's equally as important to take time away on our own uh, for for us to hear that still small voice and to allow God to breathe in us. And that's, again, coming back to the meaning of inspiration, God breathed. And so um, uh, there's one last quote, which I think illustrates as well. I pulled up here just a second ago. It's uh, from uh, uh, an individual from a period of time, which we'll all know, and I'll tell you his name in a second. He says, every prophet has to come from civilization or from the busyness, but every prophet has to go into the wilderness. He or she must have a strong impression of a complex variety and all that it has to give, and she or he must serve a period of isolation and meditation. This is the process by which psychic dynamite is made. So that, that that's from Winston Churchill, and that, uh, for me, just really illustrates that sense of as important as getting inspiration from others is, equally as important to take time away um, for that psychic dynamite, like Sir Winston Churchill talks about, to be created, and for us to create out of a place of authenticity as God speaks with us. That's a good word, and that, that sounds like a, a subject for a whole nother interview and conversation. Shane, I really appreciate your time. Tell me, how can people get a hold of you, your website, for people that are interested in talking to you more or finding more about your ministry in, in Nashville? Yeah, so I mean, the place where I work is Wind Farm Cafe. That's windfarmcafe.com, and there's live video feed every day um, in the cafe and different conversations we have with artists. Uh, both speakers and musicians, but personally, um, the nonprofit we set up as a chaplaincy service for people in the arts, helping creatives find their calling and their voice, is uh, Soul Friend, and that URL is artistsoulfriend.com. Perfect. Well, Shane, thanks so much for being with me tonight, and I hope you have a great evening and a super week, and really appreciate you being here tonight. God bless thanks. you. Thanks, Joy, for the time. I appreciate it, brother. Take care. Okay. Take care now. Bye. Bye-bye.